Welcome to Brazil, Dirk. Thank you very much, and thank you for being here as well with me. Yeah, great it's pleasure, a, yeah. It's a true pleasure to have you here. Um, you gave a talk at the Brass TESOL conference uh, titled Being Effective is Effective. Yes. Now, what exactly do you mean by that? It's the idea of creating an environment in which we uh, pay attention to the emotions that students have while learning English. And that has to do with the uh, uh, relationship that the teachers got with the students, the relationship that is fostered among the students, and most importantly, the relationship that students have with the language. So we want students to feel confident, that to feel uh, uh, comfortable, to feel that the language belongs to them. So this right. is very, very important. Right. How do you think you can create such an emotional bond between students and teachers? Um, well, there's, there's a sentence that I like very much um, that goes, um, st students, learners, do not care how much you know until they know how much you care. Right. So, um, uh, I think it has to do with presence, with uh, noticing uh, sm the small uh, signals that students uh, give us when they're not understanding, when they want to contribute with uh, their uh, experiences, with their thoughts. So, right. I think it's important to have a, an environment in which we can uh, unleash uh, students' creativity, that Definitely. we allow students to play with the language. We want students to have intimacy and sure. uh, uh, that's very, very uh, important in my opinion. So you think that by showing that you care about the students that you create an atmosphere where they feel comfortable enough to actually start creating with the language? Definitely, so, definitely. Right. The thing is, uh, most teachers care about their students, yeah. uh, but sometimes they don't know how to convey this to, to right. them. So an important thing is to prepare the classroom uh, for them. When they come, you're not doing anything else. You're there for them. Uh, you listen to uh, what they have been doing in their lives. So circle right. time is an extremely important moment. It's, it's important yeah. that we have a dialogue. And, and not only about how, uh, how and what uh, uh, we're, we're bringing, uh, but also about how they're feeling throughout the process. Right. Right. Because many times they bring beliefs that yeah. uh, they're not able or uh, that they find a, a hard time and they think that they're alone. But sure. when you open this, uh, they will notice that other students also have the same uh, feelings and then yeah. they'll be able to exchange strategies that work. And I think a very important uh, thing to do is for you to share your uh, story as uh, a language learner. Definitely. So then they will see that you also had uh, uh, similar hardships yeah. and, and that you have succeeded. Exactly. I love how you care about the communicative development of the student and see every single student as a unique individual. Yeah. I think that's what we all should aspire to, at least as teachers, to make sure that everybody at the end is able to express him or herself. Yeah in their own unique way, right? Yeah, I, I, um, I love uh, an author called Bernard Dufault. Mm -hmm. he, he talks about uh, uh, language being used uh, to serve the student. Right. And he, he says, says that, that when you shift the paradigm, you have the teacher responding to students' demands. So that's very, very different. Definitely. Because you have the teacher, as I said, as a server. So the teacher has to understand how students learn. Right. Uh, if the teacher is teaching the same level, but students are different, yeah. so then the teacher has to be present with a very uh, uh, smart uh, eye and ears to, to really figure out how uh, he or she can best give the language that students need. And, and there, uh, uh, something that I really value, and I like to incorporate moments in which we uh, stimulate students to, to say what they really would like to, Wonderful. which is emergent language. Exactly. And then, exactly. Uh, that language is not in a textbook. No. Exactly. But langu that language, I mean, students really want to say yeah, that. Because it's theirs, right? It's theirs, theirs yeah. yeah. Uh, and then, this really stays with them. I have the situation in which students, for example, in Portuguese, they say, que gracinha. 
which means uh, uh, this is cute. Yeah, yeah. And, and then we help them to say, we say, oh, cute. Yeah. Uh, and, and then they say, cute. And then you go like, this is so cute. And then yeah. they say, this is so cute. So we're able to align what students uh, feel, think, and say. So, right, yeah. yeah, exactly. No. And I love, I love the fact that you really try to enable the students through emotions to express themselves in their own unique way. Um, another question I have is related to emotions and the language that we use, yeah. whether it is your mother tongue or whether it is the language that you are learning. Do you think, especially um, for in this case related to the primary students and the very young learners, mm. do you think that when they express their emotions, and it is in Portuguese in your mm. case, that that is necessarily a, a problem? No, not at all. I think we should have uh, an environment in which children can express themselves. Yeah. So in, in some moments, at first, they will they will do that using Portuguese. Uh, in some other moments, they might use Portuguese and English, and then uh, later they they would be using uh, English only. But if if they have a moment in which they they just want to say things. They want to express themselves. So this is the concept that we had here of translanguaging. Right. So uh, I think that's, that's perfectly fine. Uh, I think that if we want students to be creative, if we want students to be really empowered, we cannot have a, a, a system, an educational approach that oppresses students in any way. I agree. I totally agree with that. Now, taking this to a more practical approach, mm. um, you have your friend over yeah. here. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> I'm Buddy the Frog. <laughs> uh, hi, Buddy. It's a, it's a pleasure to meet oh, you. Oh, same well. here, yeah. <laughs> it's a little bit cold here. Def it definitely yeah. is. I thought Brazil is going to be a lot sunnier, Buddy. Yeah. Well, but we, we can manage, yeah. We, we manage. Yeah. Manage. My, my question for, for the two of you in, in this case is how can a puppet enable us as teachers to create a positive and safe learning environment for primary students and the very young learners. Make sure you leave a comment either on Facebook, on Instagram, on Twitter and obviously on the YouTube channel. Have a wonderful week everybody and remember once again that a great teacher never stops learning. Take care.